Hello everybody, Darren Cross here. This is the lecture video for chapter 17, business 149, business math. This chapter is about depreciation and this is kind of accounting heavy. I gotta give you a disclosure. Um, I've taught this lesson many times and I understand the basic concept of depreciation, uh, but how this is really gonna pan out from an accounting standpoint, that's not my expertise. Um, if you're an accounting, and if you're not an accounting major, you really just kind of have to have the basic understanding. If you, you know, uh, I've helped people to understand that this type of a thing was available to them uh, for tax purposes in their businesses uh, from a consultant standpoint. But if you're if you're an accountant, you're going to learn more about this in other classes. So if you're headed down the accounting road, you're going to learn way more about this stuff than I know now and that I'll ever know because I'm just not interested in it. But the idea of depreciation is that when you buy things for a business, the value of that thing is less each year because we're essentially wearing it out as we as we go through time or as we go through uh, activity. Um, and the reason why that's important to us is because if it doesn't have the same value year after year, then we can actually deduct that appreciation. That, that's an expense. It shows up as an expense to us, and that's a good thing. So if I buy a truck, um, and that truck, and I can, and I can uh, uh, reduce my taxable income by the amount of depreciation that year, that's great for me because that's less money upon which my, my taxes are based. And one truck for one business is one thing, but when you're talking, you know, hundreds of thousands of trucks or this plant or equipment that companies might be using and they're, they're, appreciating, they're depreciating these things, it could end up being very, very valuable. So companies like to take their depreciation if they can. And they want to take it as quickly as they can because that means that they get the tax benefit of that thing sooner, okay? So that's really what we're talking about in Chapter 17, and let's dig in. The, the idea here, what we're going to be doing as we go through is we're going to figure out how to actually take this depreciation year after year. And, and we're not going to look at the, the, uh, the actual um, uh, accounting treatment or the tax treatment or anything like that. We're just going to talk about how much depreciation can we have uh, at the end or can we take each year and what that really means for us, generally speaking. And in order to do that, we have to understand these terms. So depreciation, as I said, is an estimate of the use or deterioration deterioration of an asset. Okay, and we're not going to be able to usually, unless there's something special going on. Sometimes the government will say, "Hey, if you buy this item, you can depreciate the whole thing in the first year," and that's great. Um, but most of the time, we don't do that. What happens is you can depreciate a little bit each year, but there's a total amount of depreciation that you can take. And so accumulated depreciation is how much depreciation have you taken so far, right? So if I can depreciate, you know, $100,000 over five years, right, it's going to, and I'm going to have a book value of, you know, say $5,000 at the end of uh, this five years or a residual value of $5,000 at the end of this five years. That means I can do um, $95,000 for five years. So how much would that be a year that I can take as my depreciation? Well, each time, I, that's what, uh, a little less than $20,000, right? So each time um, I am taking depreciation, and then the next year I take the depreciation that I have from that year and add it to the previous because I can never take more than 95. So you're basically just counting the amount of depreciation you took because you can never go more than the total depreciation. The asset cost, that's the, what we paid for an item. Uh, estimated useful life. In order to understand depreciation, uh, we need to understand how long an item is usually going to live. And um, companies can determine that. Companies have determined that. But then um, what has evolved is that we ha there are lists that tell us what the useful life is of certain things. And we'll, we'll see how that pans out later on. Um, residual value is the salvage or trade-in value, the expected cash value at the end uh, of an asset's useful life. So the residual value is once you've actually depreciated everything that you can, what's the value of that item? Okay. 
And that, that'll be given to us a lot of times. And the book value is the unused amount of the asset cost that may be depreciated in future accounting periods. So it's how much depreciation do we have left? It's basically how much depreciation do we have left, but we need to understand that at some point, um, the what it ends up being is the asset cost minus all of that depreciation that you've taken so far, right? So the accumulated depreciation, all right? So if you've only depreciated, if this item is you know a $100,000 item, and you can depreciate $100,000 over uh, five years, but you've only done one year, your accumulated depreciation is 80,000 or uh, 20,000. You've only taken 20,000 worth of depreciation on this $100,000 uh, item. That means you have $80,000. The book value of your item is $80,000. As you keep taking it, you get down to the point to where you have nothing left, right? But you need to understand that book value will never be less than the residual value. At the end of this, when you've taken all the depreciation, book value will equal your residual value. So your book value ends up being your residual value once you've taken all of that depreciation. Now, why do things depreciate? Um, number one, product obsolescence. It means that we this product just, it has no value anymore because it doesn't do the thing that uh, that it was supposed to do or none of these are around anymore. Um, or it can actually physically deteriorate. So deteriorate. So we assume that, I mean, if it's a physical item, it's not going to be in the same shape if you're going to be using it, right? So uh, that's really what's happened. The the concept that we're dealing with when we're talking about depreciation. Now there are several different ways that we could depreciate. The easiest way is the straight line method, and it distributes the same amount of expense to each period of time. Okay. So the depreciation expense or the depreciation each year, the depreciation itself, depreciation expense and depreciation are the same thing. Equal the cost of the item minus the residual value. That's always going to be the depreciation. How much you paid for it. Let's see. Um, do they have... Oh, they don't have... They don't have the formula here, but... When you have a cost and you take the depreciation away from it, that actually leaves you with, uh, or when you take the residual value, right? So if you look at what the residual value says, it's the expected cash value at the end of the useful life. So once you've taken all your depreciation, this is what it's left with. So if you look at what you paid for it and you take what it's left after you take all the depreciation, the only thing else in that formula is the depreciation. So that's why this really means depreciation, right? So the the uh, cost minus residual value is the total depreciation that you're going to take. And then you divide that total depreciation times the, the number of useful years for that item. And that tells you how much depreciation you could take each year. So let's look at this example. Ajax, Ajax company buys equipment for $2,500. So that's their cost. At the end, and the company estimates that the uh, equipment has a useful life of five years. After five years, it will have a residual value of $500. Okay, so it costs them $2,500. The residual value will be $500. So at, after they take all of their depreciation, it'll be worth $500. So that means the total depreciation is two, 2,500 minus 500, $2,000. And that's the total, but we need to know how much we're gonna do each year, right? So we divide by five. So we can depreciate $400 a year. What does this mean? This means that we can deduct $400 a year. And there's a couple of things that we're doing. And in order to do that, we have to look at a depreciation schedule, which this is something that you'll be preparing as well. So. The cost will always stay the same. It's not going to change. We pay $2,500 for the thing. Um, and then we look at the depreciation that we can take each year. And we're counting the accumulated depreciation because we can't take more than the total depreciation. And it leaves us with the book value and eventually the residual value. So let's look at this. It costs us $2,500. We can take $400 that first year. So we can deduct $400 that first year for depreciation, 
okay? So, so far we've taken $400. The total book value of this item, so if we were trying to evaluate our assets, we could not say 2,500, we would have to say 2,100, right? That's the value of this asset. It's the cost minus the accumulated depreciation so far or the, the depreciation that we took that year, right? So then in the second year, you look at this $400. So far we've taken 800, but this, but this $400 comes from this $2,100. And we just keep doing it. $400 comes from 1,700. $400 comes from uh, 1,300. $400 comes from 900. And this is what we're left with, the residual value at the end. Remember, book value can never be less than the residual value. So all we're doing is we're, de we're deducting or we're taking depreciation of the same amount each year. So the book value starting here is just reduced by this amount every year. Straight line. That's why they say it. It's just straight line, same amount. Now, sometimes we uh, accumulate or we get that asset and we don't have the full tax year to take it. So sometimes we have to, we can, we can only take that depreciation for partial years. So let's look at this. They bought the equipment for 2,500 on May 6th. The estimated use of life is five years and the residual value is 500, same situation. But what would the depreciation be for that first year? We're, we're not getting a full year there, right? So, we have to use the 15th rule if the uh, if the actual item is bought on the 15th or after, then we go to the next month. But if it's bought before the 15th, then we include that month, right? So um, this, is, uh, this is actually May 6th, which is before the 15th. So we count May, and we're not doing days, we're just doing months. We count May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. So that's eight months out of the 12 for that year. So we get eight twelfths of that depreciation for that year. And that's what we're really doing here. Um, so this is the same thing that we were doing, but we, we can only take this depreciation for eight twelfths of the year. So this $400, which we figured out before, is multiplied times eight twelfths or what is that? Two thirds? So 266 is the only amount uh, that we can depreciate for that first year, right? May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and December. So there's eight months here that you can take that or this depreciation, you prorate it. Okay, now there's units of production methods. Sometimes it's not just how many years, but this item is less is worth less each time it makes something right so if you look at like factory equipment the depreciation expense or depreciation um is what you're figuring out is per unit how many units it actually uh produces so you take cost minus residual value again that's depreciation and now you're trying to figure out how much depreciation is for each unit that you produce so you divide by the total total estimated units that you're going to produce, right? Um, so if you look at, uh, then the next thing you have to do to figure out the depreciation is you multiply the depreciation unit by the actual number of units that you produce. So Ajax company uh, buys equipment for 2,500 and they estimate the units the equipment can produce. They assume that the equipment can produce or it has a useful life of 4,000 units, right? So after five years, the residual value is $500. Calculate the depreciation expense and complete a depreciation schedule using the units of production method. So what we're saying here is every time we make a unit, we need to, the, the value of that item is left less and we can depreciate, we figure out how much it's less by figuring out the depreciation per unit, right? So the cost minus residual value, cost minus residual value is $2,000. And then divide by the total estimate units they think it can produce. Divide by 4,000. It can only produce 4,000 units. Now, it can, but we're talking about the value of this thing, right? It can produce more, maybe. But 
we're talking about the value of this thing for depreciation purposes. So they're saying this thing has a good 4,000 units in it. So $2,000 divided by 4,000 units is 50% per unit. What, am, what are we saying? What we're saying is each unit per, you produce is 50 cents worth of depreciation. And then after five years, it's only worth $500. So when we go to the schedule here, this schedule will tell you how many uses it produced or how many uh, units it produced. 300, so 300 times 50 cents is 150. That's the depreciation you can take for that year. Depreciation for that year. Malt, or subtract that from the cost of the equipment, 2350. 400 this year, so you can take 200 worth of depreciation. 400 units, $200. Well, $200 plus this 150 is 350. But that's just the accumulated. This doesn't come into here. Here, you're actually subtracting that 200. Right, 2350 minus 20 minus 200 is 2150. 600 units produced is $300 worth of uh, depreciation. You've accumulated 650, but when you take this $300 from here, you get 1850. 2000 units is $1,000 worth of depreciation. Add it up totally, you've taken 1650. And then when you take this 1000, from here, you're left with 850. 700 units, $350. Take that from here, you're left with 500, and you can't take any more depreciation. Now, what if you produced more? Too bad, you can only take this $350 because that's all that's left, because you've reached the total of uh, accumulated depreciation that's possible for this. Pretty straightforward. Declining balance method. This is an accelerated option. It's a double, it's really a double acceleration method, right? So um, what's happening is uh, you're able to, uh, we're looking, we're trying to find a, a, a rate that we're going to use. Because if you look at double declining method, um, you can think, well, if a straight line method um, declines each, each year for five years, then that's only 20% um, a year. So double declining method is, or you know, a double straight line is like a declining balance method. Then what's happening is you can take twice that each year. So the rate is 40%. Um, and that's really what we're doing. But you would say, wait a minute, then if we take it over five years, then we would end up taking 200% of that thing if it really is doubling. No, it's not really that because what we're doing is we're finding a rate and we're using that rate based on a, uh, a beginning balance each year. So the rate is going to be 40%, right? So we're going to do, you know, if we do a typical declining or a typical straight line method over five years, it's 20% multiplied times two, 40%. Guess what? Everybody takes the most amount of depreciation they can. Nobody says, well, I could, I could depreciate this a little bit um but i'm not gonna go the full uh double depreciation no everyone want you want to get the tax benefit that you can now so this is the rate for double declining method 40 percent and what we're doing is um we're actually taking this 40 percent of the the initial book value each year until we get down to the bottom right so HX company buys equipment and the company estimates how many units the company, the equipment can produce. Let's assume the equipment has a useful life of 4,000 units. After five years, residual value is $500. Calculate depreciation expense and complete a depreciation schedule using the declining balance method. Now, some of this stuff is not going to be important, as you'll see when we go through here. So we're talking about 40%, right? So we start with the book value. And we our depreciation that we could take is 40%. 40% of this book value is a thousand dollars. So we could take this a thousand, we can take the thousand um, uh, dollar depreciation. So what's happening is the book value at the end of a year is fifteen hundred. Now we start with that book value at the beginning of the year, 
and we can only do 40% of that. We can't, we're not doing 40% of 2,500 every time because then we would take $5,000 of depreciation at the end of it, at the end of five years for an item that costs us 2,500. You're getting a deduction, you're getting twice the deduction for what you spent. So we're not able to do that. You take 40% on the book value, the beginning book value, which is the ending book value of the previous year, right? So uh, 40% of 1,500 is 1,600. We take 1,600, or I'm sorry, 600. So we take 600 off of this 1,500. We're left with the book value of $900. Now, our accumulated appreciation is going up here, okay? But we can only take $2,000 because remember, we our book value cannot be less than the residual value, and our residual value is going to be $500. That's what they told us. So the book value at the beginning of the third year nine hundred dollars forty percent of that is 360 we take 360 from this 900 here and 540. now here's the deal we can do this 540 times 40 percent here's the deal we know that we only have forty dollars left so forty dollars is the only depreciation that we could take because we can't take more than two thousand so it's pretty simple you just you're using double the straight line rate, which is 40%. Uh, there are some situations where, depending upon what you're dealing with, uh, if you can depreciate it over a longer number of years, but for our purposes, it's usually 40%. Now, the um, maker's system, the modified accelerated cost recovery system, is just a system used by the IRS to kind of just figure this stuff out. Uh, automatically right so uh there are some things to understand it's the this is describing it i don't really want to spend much time on this stuff i just want to go to the math but understand that this is just these are the tables that the irs uses to figure out um how much depreciation people can take each year based upon the class of of items so it's a little bit easier and what happens is it's the asset types are are uh, categorize under these classes right so if you look what happens is you have different classes of assets that can use that can be used to uh to actually calculate the depreciation and what happens is depending upon the uh the actual um class of that item we can depreciate uh according to these are interest or not interest rates these are percentage rates right so we're going to depreciate over this amount of time and all of these when you add them up are 100 percent right so when you go to figure out an item what you need to know is how much the what what class it is and um usually they'll tell you that right so if you look at this using the same equipment cost for uh ajax is 2500 dollars in a five-year class um and it's not part of the previous tax bill um what we're doing here if you look at the five-year class let's go back for a second the five-year class the rates are 20 32 19 20 11 52 11 52 these are percentage right so 20 percent in the first year 32 19 11 percent all right so that's what we're gonna do 20 percent, and we're using the book value this time right um this is just calculating all of this stuff in there so we don't have to go by and um really what you're what you're trying to figure out is just the accumulated um depreciation and the book value but they're telling you what it is because they're giving you the rates um so first year 20 percent, 20 times 20 percent times 2500 500 so you take 500 dollars away or 500 dollars away from here you get 2000 right 32 percent of 2500 800 take 800 away 1200 and you're you're uh your accumulated or your depreciation is actually accumulating at the same time. 19.2% of 2,500, $480. Take $480 away, you're left with 720. So on and so forth. That's what's going until we get a, a book value at the end of the year of zero. One of the things that I didn't mention here is that there's no residual value. They don't take that into consideration. They just give you the rates, right? So I think I think this is pretty straightforward. You figure out the class, 
And then you take the rates that they're saying each year until you get to the end. It's really that simple. Okay, so dig into that stuff. And as always, if you guys have any questions at all, feel free to reach out to me.